In this lecture, we'll be looking at creating dynamic queries with Angular Firestore. So we have a collection called Lesson and a couple of documents that contain things like an author, a content, date, end date, and title. So these could be particular lectures for a course. We have this end date here of the 24th of December and another end date of the 31st of December. So I want to query for a specific week. This is where the end date is seven days after the previous end date. So to start with, let's ensure that we have our Angular Fire set up inside of the project. I'm going to go over to artmodule.ts and import the Angular Fire module and the Angular Firestore module and appropriately initialize our application. Make sure you've added this to our imports. And then inside of our app component.ts, We can add a constructor and inject Angular Firestore. And that comes from Angular Fire 2 slash Firestore. Next up, we need to create what's known as a reference. This is where our Firestore collection is. And we can say lesson ref. And that's an Angular Firestore collection. And at this point, it expects a type. So we can then create a models folder and a lesson.model.ts and export a new interface called lesson. And that lesson has a date of type date. It also has a title of type string, content of type string, author of string, and end date of date. This model is currently different to the collection that we have on Firestore but I want to keep things super simple. So what I'll then do is import the lesson and add that to the Firestore collection type. Make sure we spell this with a capital S and import that from Angular Fire 2 slash Firestore. To start with, let's get something on screen. We can set the lesson reference equal to this.afs.collection and it will be a collection called lesson. We can then create a new lesson dollar of type observable lesson array and this will hold the lessons that we get back from firestore and we can set the lesson dollar equal to the lesson ref dot value changes at this point we could head over to our app component and we could make a new ul with an li and for each li we can create a new lesson using the async pipe and simply display the lesson title. So what we currently have is both the lesson title and the lesson end date. And we'll pipe that using the date pipe. And we can then see that of course we have lesson one, which ends at the 24th of December and lesson two ending at the 31st of December. Let's create our own end date subject. This will be what's known as a behavior subject. And a behavior subject allows us to provide an initial value. So let's import behavior subject from RxJS. We can then give our behavior subject the type of date. And if we wanted to, we could set the initial end date equal to a new behavior subject with the date of 2017, 12, 24. So we're essentially saying that our initial end date that we want to filter for should be the 24th of December. For now, I want to remove the lesson reference. So let's remove both the variable and the declaration. And instead of saying that our lesson dollar will be equal to the value changes event on our lesson reference, instead we want to take the end date and we want to use the dot pipe method. This is a new method that was added on the later versions of RxJS. And effectively, it allows us to control our imports, our tree shaking, and a variety of other concepts with the RxJS operators. These are now simply pure functions, which we can import from RxJS slash operators, and we'll want to use switch map. We can use the switch map function to get the current date and pipe this to this.afs.collection of lesson. But we then want to use the reference function. 
we want to reference where the end date is equal to our date. But we also want the value changes because we want this as an observable. We then need to type our collection. So let's type this as lesson. And already on screen, you can now see that we have lesson 51, but we don't have lesson 52. If I change this to instead be the 31st of December, we now get lesson 52, but not lesson 51. The great thing about observables and behavior subjects is that we can push in next value. So let's then create a next lesson function and a previous lesson function. We can say that we want to push the end date dollar dot next, and we want to next the current date. And then we need a way to add seven days to this date. One of the easiest and most consistent ways to do this is to use moment. We might be using moment throughout our application in other places if we're dealing with dates quite often. So let's open up our terminal and we can use npm install moment. We can then import moment. So let's import all as moment from moment. And we can go back down and say, actually, we want to get the current value and surround this in the moment tag. So we'll say moment, get the current date. And then we'll add seven days. And we'll then cast this to a date because our behavior subject is expecting to have a date. We can then copy this and add it for our previous lesson. But instead, now we want to minus seven days. Once we've done that, we can head back over to our app component.html and we can add two buttons, one that says next and one that says previous. And for each one, we can add a click event called next lesson. And finally, previous lesson. If we then click next, we get the lesson 52 and previous will give us lesson 51. So depending on an observable input, we can then of course change the query from Angular Firestore, giving us the ability to truly filter our data in a much more consistent manner than the real-time database.